The United States has faced a number of problems in the wake of the increase in rates of air pollution that we've been um, struggling to figure out what exactly the relationships are between the air pollution that we have and a number of health problems that we've been seeing in our various populations. Uh, so one of the things that we know is that vulnerable populations, those with pre-existing respiratory disease such as asthma or COPD, are being affected by these rates of pollution. Um, and we see this in their hospital admissions, their symptoms, um, and in the progression of disease. Uh, one relationship between air pollution um, and child health that we see is an increase in allergic rates or rates of allergic types of disease, and asthma is one of them. Uh, and, you know, I think it becomes important to consider all sources of air pollution, both indoor and outdoors, uh, that can negatively influence the health of children growing up in our especially urban environments. The United States has done a fantastic job, I think, in reducing the rates of indoor uh, cigarette exposure, mainly through a lot of public health strategies that have, of course, banned indoor smoking in public places. And I, I think this is a fantastic example of a public health uh, mission to help improve the health of the communities. Um, unfortunately, we are still stuck with private um, exposures to cigarette smoke, and these are out of the control of public policy, uh, unfortunately. And so we are still seeing the effects of indoor cigarette smoke um, exposure on uh, people's health, whether that's pediatric or adult uh, diseases such as asthma and COPD. Um, one of the things about indoor air pollution is that it is not regulated in the same way that outdoor air pollution is. And as a result, um, indoor standards are not um, subject to, say, for example, the EPA limits that, that are in place. Um, unfortunately, we also know that in many urban environments, indoor air pollution levels far exceed um, the outdoor levels. Um, and not only that, but they exceed the EPA levels for what's safe as a limit um, many, many fold. So um, we end up seeing vulnerable populations, those that live in minority, popu you know, minority communities, those are in the inner cities who have a tremendous continued exposure to secondhand smoke in their homes, and these can lead to significant adverse health effects.